testing framework because you guys are going to have to create a unit test for next week as well. <coughs> unit testing actually is a framework that allows us to assert certain conditions in our code. And it's using this library Where is it? These are the libraries. It's using the JUnit library. Okay? This is the one that it's going to allow us to create the unit testing of our code. And in fact, since we're going to be building our project as a test driven development project, then you know we're going to have to create before we, we implement any functional requirement, we're going to have to specify the um, the test for it. We have to implement the test for it first, then write the code that passes that test. <coughs> so let's copy from... there isn't much time left, so I'm going to have to run through this really quickly. Let's copy the first simple test example from the author's source code. And we're going to put it under the test package. This is what it looks like. From the JUnit framework, we're going to import something called a test, a test case, and a test suite. Basically, this is how you want to read it. A test suite is made out of several test cases. And each test case will have as many tests as you need to test. All right? So we're going to create a class called a simple test, which extends from the test case. Okay? What that means is it's going to have a main. By having a main, that means I can run it independently from any other class in my project. And that's what you want to be able to do. You want to be able to run your tests that test your code independently from the application that that code is running on under. Okay? So you will create something called a simple test class that has a main. And what does the main do? All the main does is it actually loads up the user interface for the test runner. And the test runner is like the main class in the unit testing uh, environment. And you run it with your suite of tests. So you're going to have to implement a suite um, static function that returns a test. And basically all it does is it's going to test all the different classes. And you're going to tell all the different classes that you're going to test. In this case, there's only one. So you're going to return the test suite of simple test class. And so simple test class, which is the same class that we're looking at, that we're inside it, what is it going to do? It's going to execute every single method in that class that starts with T, E, as T. Can you tell me how many functions or methods in the te in the simple test class start with T E S T? Just two. Test at success and test at failure. Right? So those are the two methods that are going to be tested when we run this simple test. Okay? And we could add here other classes if we wanted to. But this is a simple test. We just want to be able to test this thing very quickly. The idea is for you for you guys to get the hang of the framework. So we're gonna create the most simple test that we can create. We're gonna create a test that says that two plus three equals five. Okay? And that 2 minus 3 is not equal to 5. 
Very simple as that, right? So test at success is the method that is going to test for us that 2 plus 3 equals 5. So we have to create it three different variables here. Value 1 is 2, value 2 is 3, and expect the result is 5. Okay? And all we're going to do under test at success is we're going to assert true. And assert true is one of the many assertions that we have available in our unit testing framework. It's not the only one. This is probably one of the most important ones. Assert true. You want to? You guys want to see all the different asserts that you have available? Assert equals. You can you can do almost assert equal of every single type, including your own objects, short strings, double float strings with messages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can assert false. You can assert not null. You can assert not the same. You can assert null. You can assert same. You can assert true. Okay. You can do all those assertions and test for a specific condition. In this case, we are asserting that it's true that value 1 plus value 2 is equal to expect the result. In other words, that 2 plus 3 equals 5. What are we testing here in the test add fail method? We are asserting true that 2 minus 3 equals 5. Is 2 minus 3 equals 5? No. So this is going to fail. This is going to fail. Okay? And we're going to see it running. And we can run it independently, like I said, because this is a class that has the main, and all it does is it's going to load the UI from the JUnit framework. So let's do it. Let's run it. Run as a Java application. And here it is. There was one failure. So the number of tests run was two. One failed, no errors. Okay? There is another way of running this thing. And that is through the plugin, the JUnit plugin available in Eclipse that it will be installed by default when you install Eclipse. That's why when you're trying to run this simple test, Eclipse detected that it has JUnit framework references to it. So it said, you know what? I might be able to run this as a JUnit test. So if instead of running it as a Java application, which all it does is run the main, you can run it as a unit test. And when you do that, look at this. This is pretty neat because it will load the unit testing, this guy, interface, the GUI. And this GUI will tell you, this is the name of the class that you're testing, called simple test. And these are the two tests. This one, check mark, green, it passed. This one, eh, it did not pass. X. And it will tell you how many seconds it took to execute and all that, all that neat stuff. Got it? So, what do we have to do to our code so that one last? statement passes our test. Assert false that 2 minus 3 equals 5. Okay? And then we're going to rerun the test. And there you go. You're all green now. Green is good. You want all your tests to be green. This one succeeded and this one succeeded. Okay.